And the final item is this uh, this item right here. I actually uh, picked this up at the flea market. I went into one of the vendors who I see quite often to see if he's got anything in that I could use. I saw this sitting on the counter uh, in his in his booth and uh, immediately recognized it to be a pretty early uh, stereo amplifier. And then I was uh, impressed to see that it had the original, it's a little rough, but it has the original owner's manual with it. And this is a Lafayette model LA350 70 watt stereo amplifier. So this is probably 1960s vintage. This is a tube amplifier. It actually has vacuum tubes in it. Uh, back in the day, this would have been a pretty expensive uh, unit. There's oxidation on the front here, or almost like a, a mildew or a mold staining, and, and a little bit of, actually that doesn't even look like it's scratched, but I, I could tell that this would clean up really easily and that this was really clean in the front. The cabinet's a little bit scuffed up. Um, by no means is it mint. But of course the first question I asked him because I didn't see a price on it was, does he know if it works? And he admitted to me, he said, no, he said it needs a transformer. And I said, well, how do you know it needs a transformer? And he says, well, he said, because he plugged it in and turned it on and the transformer started smoking. Now, just because the transformer is smoking doesn't mean it needs a transformer yet. The transformer smoking could easily be a short circuit somewhere that's drawing way too much current from the transformer. Um, could be any number of things going on. So I looked at it and I said to him, I said, well, uh, I said, it's still really clean. I said, well, how much would you sell it as a repairable or a parts unit? And he said to me that he believed that in good working condition, it was worth about $200 or more. And so he said, it's gonna be worth at least 25. I took a closer look at it and what I noticed was Okay, so here's a view of the back of the unit. You can uh, you can actually uh, see the transformer right here. And what I noticed was that underneath the transformer where it's mounted on the uh, chassis right there, there are some very new looking nuts. It appears to me that what's going on here is that this transformer was replaced. I don't think this is the original transformer. And I think what they did was I think they put an oversized transformer in here. And I think they had to put nuts in there as spacers. I think the original transformer sat, this part of the transformer would sit right down onto the chassis. And I think they had to raise this up because I think the, uh, the part of the transformer that protrudes down into the chassis, I think was hitting. So, there's something screwy going on here with this transformer. It actually looks like a, uh, a newer transformer, um, for sure. Kind of got a straight on shot at that transformer, so you can kind of see what I was just talking, trying to talk about was that the transformer is actually sitting cockeyed, so I'm not quite sure what's going on there. So I'm not gonna bother even trying to power it up since uh, we know that uh, based on what he said, it was smoking. Uh, so there's probably gonna be a, uh, a series uh, at some point that I'll I'll sit down and do a little bit of uh, troubleshooting and at least try and figure out how to get the thing to turn on without smoking because uh, it's a lot easier to sell it with uh, some signs of life maybe if we can even get one channel working or something like that or ideally fix the thing completely but this is again something I bought for resale and I'd rather not just sell it as as a as is smoking parts machine I'd rather try and do a little bit of work to see if we can't get it a little more straightened out. So there you go, you can really see those, uh, what's going on there. Not only that, but I don't know if you could tell, but it actually looks like it's kind of sitting cockeyed. The top of the chassis has got a dent right here where it almost looks like the, they, they, I don't know for what reason, I don't know if they, they hit this thing hard and the weight of the transform actually pushed it in. Now one of the things that's really cool about any old equipment from this era is oftentimes the owner's manual would contain a schematic diagram and this one is no exception uh, so this is a full schematic diagram for the thing and because it's a tube amplifier it's a very basic design uh, up here they're saying v3 um, v3 would be the designation for one of the tubes 
and uh, it goes back to when tubes were referred to as valves because one of the jobs that vacuum tubes did back in the day was um, uh, they acted as valves as far as uh, uh, controlling current flow. So anyways, uh, 12AX7 is a, is a tube number slash EC83. That's a well-known tube. So those are probably your, uh, let's see, that's probably your pre-drivers maybe. I don't know, 6A and 8s. And then here are your outputs, the 7189s. And the two tubes are sitting here, and this is what's called a uh, push-pull configuration because you've got the plate or the anode of one tube coming into the top of the winding of this tr output audio output transformer, and then you've got the uh, plate of the other one at the bottom of the transformer. So that's called a push-pull design. Um, well, so that'll be interesting. And here's that big power transformer right there that's been replaced. And I could see right off the bat, uh, you know, the secondary goes right into goes right into these diodes right here. So, you know, shorted diode, shorted filter capacitors, these are all uh, possibilities as far as uh, you could even have a shorted tube. But anyways, that, that's, that's for another day. So here's a better look at that schematic. Um, down here you've got the brute force power supply. There's the transformer that's uh, most likely smoking. And the secondaries go right into these uh, rectifier diodes and the filter capacitors. So you could have a short anywhere in here that could make that smoke. Um, you know, ideally, it, it, you, you, you'd like to see that it would be blowing this fuse right here, this 4 amp fuse. But it might be just drawing enough excess current to overheat the transformer. Or it could be that whoever replaced this transformer didn't know what they were doing and just threw a completely wrong transformer in there. That would be unfortunate. It's possible, though. And uh, over here is the output section. And they're using two uh, 7189A tubes per channel uh, in what's called a push-pull uh, layout. So you've got the, the anode or the plate of one of the tubes coming into the top of the primary winding of the audio audio output transformer and then you've got the plate of the other tube coming to the bottom of the same winding so um, that's a classic push-pull output and then you've got of course the transformer acts to uh, isolate the audio output uh, to the speakers from the uh, high plate voltages that would be present which in this case are 430 volts here on this plate but I'm getting ahead of myself that that's uh, that'll be for uh, when we actually tear into this thing and do a little diagnosis <laughs> I did it again I do that all the time I end up uh, forgetting about a box of something I had bought and I was just going through in my head and realized hey something was missing so I had this box on the floor over there and totally forgot this is this is also from that warehouse liquidation stuff deal. This is just a uh, tie-down strap. It's a decent one. It might even be just a Harbor Freight one. A uh, little frayed here and there, but uh, ratcheting tie-down strap. I gave five bucks for that. But what I thought was really cool were these. I remember growing up on the farm that my father had in the garage, he had one of these little metal drawer units like this and he kept, uh, I believe he actually kept cotter pins and rivets, if I recall correctly in there, the, the kind of rivets that you, uh, you use to put replacement uh, triangle shaped blades on sickle bar. We had a sickle bar mower and occasionally you, know, you hit a rock or whatever and you had to change out a a blade and you had to you buy these boxes of blades and they were riveted on well anyways uh, so I think I might still have that box somewhere but it's you know rusty and in bad shape I came across these and what I thought was so cool about these this one's well this one's got a little bit of a dent in the top there this one's got some surface rust on it um, but what was what I thought was really cool was no one ever bothered taking off the original advertising packaging here. So this actually has this cool advertising stuff on it here. It's, uh, it says the steel gadget box, all metal storage cabinet. Uh, hang them, stack them, ideal for every purpose. 
uh, for office, at home, workshop, or school. Keep small things in their place. Uh, made and printed in the USA. So, it's kind of a neat thing. This one's a little damaged on this side. And uh, one of these was actually upside down when I found it, so everything had fallen out of position, so some of these drawers didn't even want to open. So I'll just go real quick through what's in these drawers. I don't think there was anything of any consequence in the drawers. Oh, so I gave, uh, I gave 10 bucks for the pair, five bucks a piece for these. It was glue. It just says glitter styrofoam glue. Seems like it's hard as a rock. Yeah, that's trash. That's a little plastic cord. Oh, that's a little, uh, turning blade. There's a couple of old radio knobs. Hmm. That could actually be a little piece of gold chain. Clamp for repairing your garden hose. Yeah, when we were there, the guy pointed out to me that there was a whole stack of these in here, and he didn't know what they were. There's some sort of a metal blade. They're very thin. I don't know whether or not these are part of a stacked dado head cutter set, or if these are replacement chopper blades for some sort of a uh, food chopper or something. I don't know, they seem, they're awfully sharp. I don't know, they just seemed too thin to me to be stacked dado head blades. So, if anybody recognizes what these are, enlighten me. Of course, none of the blades are labeled, that'd be too easy. What's in these little boxes? Three sixteenth inch router. So since these are in the same drawer as the uh, blades, that's making me think maybe those are okay. That's a bigger router bit. That's making me think maybe those are dado head blades. The weird little uh, router bits that have no marking on them whatsoever are in these plain white boxes too. I don't know what these are. Some of these larger carrot bolts were what was getting hung up on this straw. Oh. <laughs> Let's see, these are just 15 amp AGC style fuses. Here's a box of, looks like tens. But these puppies here are the old cartridge fuses. Coolidge price, 85 cents. Pretty sure I could throw those away. Finial for something. Oh, look at these. These are... I'm pretty sure these are adapters for little candelabra bulbs from one size to another size. Huh. Oh, ring terminals. I wonder if this is... Yeah, this is... uh. Dynamic blade balancing kit. I believe this is actually for um, ceiling fans. I think if you've got a wobbling ceiling fan, you use this kit to actually, uh, for a variety of reasons, 
Your ceiling fan may wobble when installed. Yep, that's what that is. Oh, look at them big cartridge fuses. Oh, yeah. Huh? There's a little stone I could put on a Dremel. Hmm. Wonder what these are. Three little wedges. Interesting. All right, now we're done. So this is that Bunton lawnmower that I picked up. It's an old one. Um, but actually, I think it's going to clean up pretty well. A lot of that's just dirt and grease that hasn't been taken off of there. And I think underneath, the original paint's actually pretty decent. I think that's even the original paint on the motor. By the looks of the motor, the motor's probably a Briggs and & Stratton. And, uh, yeah, yeah, it's definitely a Briggs & Stratton. It's an 8 horsepower. It's a good size motor. Looks like we got uh, two spindles in the front, so there should be two blades underneath there. The front uh, wheels there. Look at those nice, beefy support arms for the front trailing wheels. Well, they're not really trailing wheels if they're in the front, are they? But, I mean, you don't see that kind of construction anymore, I don't think. And all metal gas tank. It's another telltale sign that's an early one. Also the control layout. I think even the hand grips are original on this thing. And actually in pretty good shape. So what do we got? We got a throttle here. We got... Uh, a lever here to engage the blades and we get a lever here to increase or decrease the ground speed so I don't know might be uh, might be a good prospect first thing I did was cranked it over and seeing that a it's not frozen and B it feels like it's good compression the uh, guy who had it said that the uh, they had found that it had two fuel shutoffs that they weren't aware of. And so he thought maybe that was a problem. And then he said they got a new spark plug and tried that. I can see right here they lost the screw and they just stuck a uh, they stuck a sheet metal screw in there. So hopefully they didn't mess up those threads too badly. Maybe we just clean them up with a tap. But uh, this might be a fun little project to try out when uh, spring arrives. But this is a little quick. 